Hello, welcome back to New Views with Ariel New. My name is Ariel New. Today I have a very special episode for you guys. I sat down with the founder of Mudwater, Shane Heath, to talk about wellness, mushrooms, and psychedelics. Mudwater creates these coffee alternative drink blends and they use functional mushrooms and superfood ingredients in their drinks. I take them almost every morning and it has really helped me reduce my anxiety and reduce my coffee intake while still giving me energy at the same time. Enjoy the episode. So my name is Shane Heath and I'm the founder and CEO of Mudwater. And Mudwater is a company that seeks to bring about healthy habits that lead to healthy minds. And we started by looking at the habit around how we rise. And I noticed just more personally um, that I developed an unhealthy habit around waking up, getting ready for work, trying to be productive, trying to be focused. And that habit was over-reliance on stimulants. I didn't really think of caffeine as a drug. It's kind of like something that as you get into your adult life workforce, it's like everybody's doing it. You got the coffee break and next thing you know, you're, um, you know, you're drinking a couple cups of coffee throughout the day. There's obviously benefits to caffeine, but no one really talks about the downsides. And I think being a designer, being a fine artist, um, you know, where I'd spend hours, you know, in the creative state, seeking flow state, sitting in front of a, an easel, um, was maybe more sensitive to how what I put into my body impacted my mind and how my mental state impacted my creativity and, um, productivity as well. And so I started to explore like, what if my morning routine could be more than just a vessel for high doses of caffeine? And my mom had been working in the mushroom industry since mm -hmm. before I was born and was very comfortable with mushrooms and started hearing about mushrooms like lion's mane and cordyceps and chaga and reishi. And uh, just with the comfort level, I just started ordering them and adding them to this blend of cacao, some chai, some turmeric. Really, I just wanted to create something that checked off all the boxes. I was like, I'm going to wake up and drink on, drink something warm. Um, what if it supported my mind? What if it supported my body? And, you know, what if it was a ritual that kind of could support my soul and my spirit? And uh, I had no intention to start a beverage company. I was working in tech as a designer. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt amazing. And friends started asking me what it was. <laughs> and I started making it for them. And, you know, I came to find out that I wasn't so alone in that uh, Overdoing it on stimulants gave me anxiety. I found that a lot of other people were struggling with that too. A lot of people were struggling with sleep, all sorts of things. And, and so I started making it for others. And then in May of 2018, I um, put up a website, designed the brand, and uh, that's how it got off the ground. And yeah. yeah, it's been a really fun ride. Yeah, it's been such a journey for you. And you guys are huge now. So that's amazing. Congratulations on all the success of Mudwater. And by the way, I have some right here. It's not very, like, when I make it, <laughs> you need to get the frother. Yeah, no, I do have the frother. I know that's why I need tips from you because I, I use your products every day. I literally drink Mudwater every day now. Um, similar benefits that you experience and similar story because I actually have a lot of anxiety within me and I always wanted to better manage it, but I've always also felt the positive benefits of coffee too. So I've always been wanting to find that balance. So ever since I started to explore mushroom adaptogens, that has really changed the game for me, but I'm still kind of experimenting all the time. So you don't drink coffee at all anymore. Yeah, I kind of stopped drinking caffeine probably eight years ago or drinking high doses of caffeine like eight years ago. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of benefits to caffeine. There's benefits to coffee. Uh, I think human beings have the tendency to overdo things. <laughs> and uh, the majority of the population is actually slow metabolizers of caffeine as determined by the, the variant in the CYP1A2 gene. So if you were to do like 23andMe or any of that, it'll actually let you know if oh, you're really? a fast or slow me metabolizer of caffeine. Oh. And, um, you know, obviously, if you're a slow metabolizer of caffeine, it's going to stay in your system longer. The effects of caffeine that might be, um, you know, non-beneficial are going to be more pronounced. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that's that's what I felt. And so, yeah, even drinking like a matcha for me, it's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. And I think like, but I agree with you, there's a, there's a time and a place. Um, right. If I was like driving late at night and just needed to keep my eyes open, mm -hmm. I, would, I would definitely drink caffeine. Right. Um, but 
I guess the state that I'm always trying to keep my mind in is more of like a creative flow state. Same. And for creativity, you want to be in a place that's like analogous to safety. Like, yeah, you want to feel alert, but creativity is, um, you know, you want to be, you want to feel psychologically safe to explore ideas that are outside the bounds of, you know, the typical patterns of society, right? Like mm -hmm. that is creative. Like you're making novel new connections and it might sound um, extreme, but when you're in a state of even minor fight or flight, you are probably more adept to do um, analytical things, math, mm -hmm. you know, going from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start to get more abstract, that's putting you in a state of psychological unsafety, like because you feel like you can't predict the future. Yeah. Um, but that's the state that I want to be in because that's that's creative state. So I found that just around 35 to 50 milligrams of caffeine when it's especially when it's blended with some like L-theanine. Yes, um, love L-theanine. Some reishi uh, and then lion's mane just like puts me in the state of, of focus, but not fight or flight. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. I love hearing that because same thing. Uh, I think when you were mentioning the type of alertness, you would like to have, I know you're speaking more so in the creative realms and versus maybe more doing analytical work. I see that in the ways that I do things too, in the content that I share, because I talk about self and social dynamics and mm -hmm. the energy. And even when I'm doing my own work, the energy I like to be in, the term I coined is alert nonchalance. Mm. So like this ability to be very present and alert of everything that's happening. It's not about suppressing. I'm highly aware but on the inside, I have this open base, open and balanced, and it's all good kind of base. So I can kind of flow. I can recognize everything. I can even still feel certain things, but I still have some regulation. So it's that sweet balance between energy and relaxation all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. What you I'm don't you really don't want to be you don't want to be sedated. Yeah, exactly. It's it's more of like it's like tranquil. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be. You don't want to be a crazy stormy ocean. Yeah. You know, either. But I, yeah, exactly. But I still want yeah. energy too because but you I want play, energy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you. I, I think you say it so scientifically almost and you see the measurements so clearly. So I'm sure you have experimented with this. But for me, I have experimented so much. And even the way that I present myself, just I've tried being really energetic, you know, drinking coffee and then just letting my energy really just go, go. Yeah. And I've also tried just sedating myself so much. So, you know, you know even with things like CBD or pushing or just taking more magnesium, l nine and no caffeine. And sometimes yeah. when I'm too sedated, then I do get boring. I just get really, really slow. So that's why I'm always <laughs> trying to find that balance. But it's so hard because you're literally trying to get two opposites to find that middle balance. But I think you understand the energy that I'm talking about. Oh, 100%. And then when you blend in, you know, a breath work or something mm -hmm. like you can, you can kind of control and modulate it yourself too. So it's not yeah. just about what you put into the body, you, you have a say in the, in the thing as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you what kind of breath work do you do? I do all sorts. So I was first introduced to breath work. Um, in 2015, I did a six month art residency in India. And oh, so wow. I was just living in India, did a, did a show over there in Goa and in, in Mumbai. And on my way back to the States, I stopped in Bali and I went to a place in Ubud called Yoga Barn. A lot of people who've been to Bali have heard of that place. Um, but it's just like been. this, it's an amazing like institute of yoga and, and kind of all things esoteric, spiritual. And there was no yoga classes, but there was like a class that said something like, nine channel breathing and i was like well that's the only class that's available i have no idea what this is walked in there and it was like life-changing it was yeah. so so intense too yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. it was a full-on like psychedelic trip yes and i was like all we did was breathe all we did yes. was like a two it was like basically holotropic breath work yes. um but i i didn't know what that was at the time right and i just felt like i just completely changed my state of being physically mentally i was just in a whole different <laughs> a, whole, a whole different body almost and and i left that and just started to research and got into wim hof then got yes, into wim true hof. holotropic breath work and um now i'll do i'll switch it up but I, it's typically more of like an active breath work um right. before this podcast i did uh 
I guess it's called like Kundalini breath work, but there's right. like, there's three different types of breathing mixed into sort of a flow. Yeah. Um, there's some like breath of fire. There's right. some two part breathing, some kind of slower breathing with some breath holds. And yeah, um, I love mixing it up, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think breath work is one of the most amazing medicines that we have. It's just so accessible and mm -hmm. you can kind of, uh, yeah, you can try different formats or modulate it to work for you. Mm -hmm. And um, you can use it to calm down. You could use it to to activate. So yeah. it's it's a pretty special thing. Yeah, I heard you mention this when we briefly talked last week too about breath work. So that's why I wanted to bring it up because mm -hmm. my morning routine now is a combination of mushroom adaptogens, mostly with mud water, breath work, and meditation. Sometimes a little bit yeah. of microdosing, but like what you mentioned last week, I think the power of the breath helps you get into that a similar state too. Totally. So I'm trying to just incorporate it into my routine. And I was just curious about the type of breath works you do because I've tried many different types. And I think like me too, I like to mix it up because sometimes I do want like a slower kind of breathing that gets me to, into the state that I want to be. And sometimes I want the more like fire breath mm -hmm. kind of breathing. So I love that you incorporated all yeah. together as well. What's your, what type of meditation practice do you do? My meditation practice, I actually have my own unique way of oh, doing yeah? it and it's mainly in the beginning i'm just wearing these headphones and i'm just breathing and that's why i incorporate breath work i used to, before i really started to look at breath work it was more so just me sitting there and breathing and my intention is just to relax like relax and just stop thinking stop feeling just relax and get to this balanced state and that's why mm -hmm. i also drink the mud water because yeah if I drink coffee, it's harder for me to get into that state. If I drink something that has a little bit of caffeine, but also has something to relax me, then I can get into my meditation. I'm normally just right outside here, drinking my mud water, breathing. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I'll get into this like connected homostasia state. And then I, for my mornings and evenings, I'm actually processing. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people, maybe people do meditations differently, but my meditations are active. There's a part mm. where I am just silencing myself because the point is to regulate, but a large part of it is practical. It's a similar experience as if I microdose, if I take psychedelics, I'm using it intentionally. Mm. So in the mornings, I'll set my intentions, go through what I want to do for the day, regulate my energy. And in the evenings, I'm reflecting on my experiences for the day and tuning my thoughts and emotions to come back to, to balance. Yeah. So it's like a visualization, priming the mind, yes. relaxing the mind. I love yes. that. Yeah. I'd say that that resonates with me as well. I, I think my morning meditation is typically more in that visioning it's it's more about visioning yeah I'll, I'll think about the day but also just think about like my life and just mm -hmm. be like visualizing and, and yeah. really trying to tune into the feeling state that um you know future things that i'm trying to call into reality yes. would would evoke in me yeah, yeah. So i've recently you... started transcendental meditation though too which is completely different tell me more about that so so like tm transcendental meditation um, also like Veda meditation is somewhat similar. I mean, it's basically mantra meditation. And so you're given a mantra that's typically more of just a sound. So it doesn't have a, a meaning per se. And it's 20, you, you typically sit for 20 minutes in the morning and in the evening. And all you do is I say like repeat the mantra, but it's more just like think the mantra. Like okay. it's like, you know, when you're sitting, if you're trying to sit in silence, like it, picture a thought. Like, where is that thought in your mind? Like, if you have like a thought about the day, mm -hmm. I try to replace that thought with the mantra. So it's not like I'm saying the mantra. <laughs> it's pretty hard to explain, but you're just yeah. trying to, to think that sound in a way. Okay. And you just do that over and over and keep bringing yourself back to it over and over and over. And okay. I've been doing it for about a month. I've heard, I, and the reason I've, I'm doing it is I just keep hearing on podcasts, successful people, people that I look up to. Um, just like casually drop that they've been doing TM for like 30 years. And I'm just like, I'm gonna try it. whoa. Yeah. yeah. And it's different. Like I'm the same way. Like I, I think with um, everything that I do, I'm just such a doer. And even with my meditation practice, I found that I was kind of like doing like, I'm going to do this meditation so I can visualize my future. And it was like a form of doing something. Yeah. 
And with TM, it's very, it's very much not that like, it's, I'm just like, it's as close to just sitting and doing nothing as possible. And the mantra actually makes it easier to do nothing because if I wasn't focused on the mantra, I would be thinking, I would be effectively like doing solving problems, whatever in my mind. And so it's pretty interesting because I've gotten to where like for maybe five or 10 minutes, I could really just like really, really, really do nothing. And just, I'm just thinking this like mantra over and over. Right. It's pretty wild. And then at the end of it, is it more, is it like an ironic experience where you actually do get inspirations and answers that come to you? Or is it more just, you just let everything go? (laughs) Yeah, I think, I think every experience will be slightly different, probably different for different people. But like, I have found that um, it's not necessarily at the end. It's like during all of a sudden, I'll, I'll have this like, I'll find that tranquility, that kind of like balance point that you're talking about, that you talked about earlier. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just like this idea will pop into my head. It's kind of like being on a long drive or like a walk. And all of a sudden something comes into your mind. It's like that. Um, Versus maybe previously, I'd be like in the meditation trying to solve the thing. It's almost just like bringing tranquility and then things just start happening. Yeah. No, I love that because... Even though I say that my meditations are practical and intentional, I do, it's just like, it's a balance within your mind when you're meditating. And if it is active, you will start to get to a point where you're thinking again, and it's not a meditation anymore. And then sometimes you get into the flow in your meditation, you get inspiration, but it's, it's always when it's just like, I, I know you probably have experienced similar experiences on psychedelics before too, but it's like when you're not chasing it and focusing on it then it comes but you need to have some intention with it whatever Mm. you're trying to solve or get inspired by so even in my active meditations i try to be conscious of not getting too caught up in the processing of things so something like that i think would be amazing because it is sometimes i get too deep into my meditations where i'm starting to just problem solve and i'm like wait i actually need to let go i need to just not think of it. And then sometimes I don't exactly even know what I'm doing, but I'll just suddenly get connected back into the flow again. And that's when I just Mm -hmm. get hit with inspiration and answers. Yeah. No, it's, it's been, it's been a cool experiment and I think I'll continue doing it. Yeah. 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 I'll try it for sure. I would love to chat a little bit about the strains you guys use in mud water and also just how you have explored the different strains of mushrooms to create the blends for mud water because I know that you mentioned that your mother was also in the mushroom industry and I think even the individual strains of mushroom adaptogens does so much for our body our mind body spirit and Mm -hmm. I always like for example if I take mud water I just take the whole blend and I've been using mushroom adaptogens for many years, but normally that's what I do. I just take like a supplement or a pill or a blend that has many different ones. I know yeah. on a high level, you know, lion's mane is for cognition. I can probably meditate with that too. And then cordyceps is more so for energy. Reishi is more so for relaxation, but I know it on a very surface level. So I'm just curious how you research on these strains to put together your blends and we can talk a little bit about maybe individual strains too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when I was starting the company again, or I guess previous to starting the company, I was just making something for myself. Mm -hmm. So I was very much just a consumer. And my mom, she was a computer science major that went to work at a company called Monterey Mushrooms, which is like Mm -hmm. the number one mushroom grower in North America. Um, At the time when she joined, they were primarily focused on culinary mushrooms. So like Portobello, like Mm -hmm. the mushrooms you'd go see, in the Delicious. produce aisle at the, at the store. Yeah. Great. And so grew up, um, you know, mushrooms were a regular part of our, our dinners every single week. And when I started to <clears throat> look at my morning ritual as something that could really serve me in like in all aspects of my life and started to look at mushrooms as a way to, um, to, uh, you know, enhance that, that ritual. Um, I started, I mean, I I was just listening to podcasts, reading online. And again, I was looking to like check off all the boxes every morning. So for me, it's like being focused and energized without being overstimulated was a huge thing. That was probably like number one, what I was trying to solve. And I found that just drinking less caffeine in and of itself for me 
was so, so beneficial. Mm -hmm. Um, indirectly, like with my sleep, I would sleep a lot better than I'd wake up, you know, more energized, feeling better, make better decisions on my diet. It was like very much so a lead domino. Mm -hmm. And I just felt, um, yeah, I felt more creative. And I added lion's mane to that to enhance yeah. the cognition, the memory, the focus. And then cordyceps was um, added for the physical performance side. Yes. So yeah, it provides kind of like a clean energy, I think more of like stamina, endurance, yes. um, cardiovascular performance. And yes. I'm a pretty active person. So outside of the the office or the art studio, I, I train jujitsu, I'm a brown belt in jujitsu and um, work out a lot, go to yoga, like yeah. surf, run, all these types of things. And so I was like, I want support on that. Yeah. And then And don't you also think cordyceps sometimes if you take it later in the day it kind of has a similar effect as caffeine? I feel like sometimes I haven't it... I haven't felt that too much, but I oh, also really? don't drink our product too late in the day. Right, um, right, right, right. And and I haven't yeah, I haven't taken cordyceps late in the day just on its own either. I but see. if I'm going on like a really long run or have like a hard training day, yeah. I'll do I do have like cordyceps extract that I'll like dose oh, up in addition to mud water yeah interesting um and then chaga and reishi were really added to kind of round out both the like mood stress support and then the immune system support what and is so chaga sorry what does chaga do again i don't remember chaga the... is like one of the most dense antioxidant um compounds on the planet so okay. so yeah very much so on the immune system side I see. And I was drinking just chaga conchs. So it comes in kind of this like bark. It's like a almost just looks like tree bark. It grows on the side of birch trees. And you can just drop that into into hot water. And it's oh, like really? a, a chaga tea. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, when I was making it for myself, you know, still like by no means was an expert. I wouldn't say I'm an expert even now. When I started the company, one of the first hires I made was a food scientist and we now have two food scientists. And, you know, at the beginning, the blend was that I was um, sharing with others through our site was basically what I was drinking for myself. And the, um, the ingredients haven't changed. But as when the food scientists joined, like we studied the ingredients more, kind of composed the ratios in a better way. Yeah. And, uh, and have like deepened our understanding of just the mushroom industry industry and as right. a whole. So our supplier is, um, it's pretty interesting. So they are California based, they grow in Carlsbad. Mm -hmm. And you could, when you're building a mushroom brand at scale, it's like you kind of have two choices. Like you can grow, you can go and find your mushrooms overseas, um, typically grown in China. And there's one major importer of that. Or you can find there's a couple bigger growers in the US. Um, and the one that we chose, they actually grow indoor. So mushrooms, they're bioaccumulators, meaning that whatever environment they're growing in, they kind of become that. So if mm -hmm. an environment yeah. is highly polluted, um, the, the mushrooms will be highly polluted. And yeah. so we wanted to grow in clean air environments. And then we also use full spectrum mushrooms. So you can, you can get just fruiting bodies or you can get mycelium only. Mm -hmm. Um, and we wanted to have both and as we started to learn about the mushroom space and working with experts and also our food science, our food science team, just learning more, there are benefits in the fruiting body that aren't in the mycelium and the inverse is true. So in the mycelium, there's higher concentrations. Like for example, in lion's mane, there's a, a nootropic um, compound called arenaceans mm -hmm. and it's found in much, much higher amounts in the, the mycelium and in most cases, like not even found in the fruiting body. I see. And then there's other compounds like, like, uh, heronacines who are more found in the, in the fruiting body and, uh, and same with, um, beta glucans more found in the fruiting body. And so we combine both and every year we do a, um, you know, request for proposal. We're looking at different suppliers in the space. What are they doing? What are they learning? And there's a lot happening. Um, yeah. There's companies that are coming up with, uh, you know, they're new, new and novel strains, but also just taking strains like cordyceps or lion's mane and enhancing the bioavailable compounds right. through just different novel growing processes. And so, yeah, we're, we're constantly learning. I'd say as a brand, we're students and we're trying to bring our customers along the journey with us. Yeah, I love it. Yeah.
I love it. So does that mean that your different blends have different amounts of each strain in them? And do you guys evolve that and change that as time goes on? So our different blends have di have the same mushroom blend in it, okay. but yeah, in different amounts. And that's primarily just to get the flavor correct. So I see. for example, in our matcha. Um, I love the matcha. It's my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah, the matcha is good. You don't need a ton like to make a, a strong matcha, like two grams of matcha is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. um, but in our cacao, uh, you know, between the cacao and the masala chai, blend um it's quite a bit of of powder so we want to include an efficacious dose of mushrooms um but we also don't want it, the flavor to be overpowering so in the matcha there's 3000 milligrams of functional mushrooms which is i think by far the the most potent you know beverage out there mm -hmm. and then in our original blend there's 2240 milligrams of the functional mushroom blend oh and really so yeah which is still like the most out of in the market but just to get the flavor composition um, correct, uh, we there's right. less mushrooms there, so we can enhance the cacao, put more cacao in there, and then the matcha. Oh, we almost needed we needed to fill it in with more ingredients, and so and we could fit more more mushrooms right. in it, so it's even more um, potent. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah, and then the matcha flavor does a really good job at masking any sort of mushroom aftertaste. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Wait, so is it it's a high, a little bit higher concentration of mushrooms in a matcha and caffeine? Higher higher dose. And yeah, matcha has 55 milligrams of caffeine and oh. our original blend has 35. Oh, shoot. I keep, I kept thinking this one has more caffeine. So, I literally the three that I have with you guys, today I drank the turmeric because this has no caffeine, right? No caffeine, yeah. Yes, and then today I was excited, but as you know, sometimes excitement can turn into anxiety. So I was like, I don't want any caffeine today. So this one they has no caffeine. Ex they say anxiety is excitement without the breath. Anxiety is excitement without the breath, and and with the different emotions. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. But the breath can help. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I thought this was, I would take this one when I just want the mushrooms to liven mm -hmm. me up for the day, but I might not need as much energy if I already feel like I have a lot of natural energy that day. And I thought this one had the most, but you're saying the matcha has the most. Caffeine. Matcha has the most, yeah. Okay. Okay. But all in all, it's all much lower than coffee. Yeah. Like for reference, if you go to Starbucks and order like a Pike's Place, which is mm -hmm. like their most common so a 12 ounce Pike's Place has 235 milligrams of caffeine. So that matcha has 55, the right. original blend has 35. Right. Um, a Pike's Place has 235. Right. And so for yourself, quite... how, what do you take every morning? What do you drink? I typically do the original blend. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, even I drink the matcha here and there, but for yeah. me, even like that, like 55 is a lot. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll feel it for sure. Yeah, but there's certain certain tasks that I think it's beneficial for. Right, right, right. Yeah. I read that you used to drink a lot of coffee back in the day. So mm. don't you feel that? I, I mean, my experience. I used to do that too. When I used to drink a lot of coffee, even though it gave me anxiety, I would just drink a lot of it. And even though every day I would be feeling anxiety, it almost muted what I like my senses. So now yeah. that I drink considerably less caffeine, same as you. When I do drink a little bit of caffeine, whether it's through coffee, tea, mud water, even just mushroom adaptogens, that's why I mentioned the cordyceps, I can feel the very nuanced, subtle impact it has on my my nervous yeah. system, my energy in general. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of, uh, you're opening the door to to feeling, you know, once you start mm -hmm. to question what you put in your body, how it makes you feel, it's just, oh, definitely. You, you become more sensitive, you're, you're more aware. Um, like I, I don't drink alcohol really anymore, yeah, um, but in college I did. And looking back at those days, I'm like, how did I even same. get by? Like if I, if I have like a couple of drinks, I'm like, I'm dead the next day. You know, it's, it's yeah. just because I, I think I'm more in tune with how my body feels. It's a little bit of a blessing and a curse. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, no, same. It's a little bit of you. like a unlearning to relearn. And, and yes. then I guess just from there, just like owning your truth a bit yes. but I'm, I'm the same way and i've heard that from a lot of people yes. i've heard both that they never thought that they would ever not drink coffee every single day um then they gave you know mud water a try for a week and now not only can 
they feel the caffeine in a much more intense way. Um, but they're just like not, they just don't want like the taste of it even. It's mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Yeah. And I think just looking back at my experience, what, what I come away with it is I just, I forgot what it felt like to feel normal. Like I was just waking up and doing the thing over and over again for so long that I actually thought that, um, I thought that that was kind of like my, my normal baseline. And if I was feeling any sort of anxiety, it was because of other reasons like, oh shit, right. I need to be on, I need to be on meds or something like that. I need right. to talk to a doctor. Um, meanwhile, it's like, you can first, you should probably first look at some of the potentially contributing factors. Like, are you sleeping well? How much caffeine are you drinking? What's your diet like? Are you exercising? Um, and oftentimes when you get those things in balance, it's like you're a whole different person and you, it's not like you've changed. You just got back down to your normal self yeah. again and it feels great. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel the same way. And I love how you said you were basically unlearning to relearn and that process is not, is not linear. I mean, for me, it wasn't because yeah. for me to learn how to regulate myself and for me to notice anxiety really means be becoming conscious and aware of it my journey has been <laughs> like the more i focus on reducing my anxiety and regulating the more i realize how much anxiety i still hold in my body and mm. every single moment in my everyday every experience will still show me where i still carry more anxiety uh carry anxiety and sometimes it almost feels like I'm dealing with more anxiety than I used to because <laughs> I wasn't conscious. Yeah, anxiety. because I wasn't yeah. conscious of it. I was just living as if that was just a normal thing. And now yeah. when I see glimpses of, I mean, now I'm way more just living it, but I still see more and more possibilities of, oh my gosh, I can be even more calm or I can be even more energized and, and composed at the same time. It's mm -hmm. like all this does that make sense? Like I, oh, yeah, I, I see sure. the I get anxiety. caught up in that a little yeah. bit too. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of like an endless loop. Sometimes yeah. it feels like it's an upward spiral. I would say. I hope it's upward. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what you hope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let, let's talk about. I we'll jump on the live soon, but I really want to also ask you a little bit about your psychedelic experiences. I know you're a supporter of the destigmatization of psychedelics, so. Yeah. I would just love to hear a little bit about your journey with psychedelics. Yeah, for sure. Um, where do we start? I know. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, my I think my first experience with psychedelics was actually when I was 14. And wow. yeah, not not really on purpose. I mean, I, I grew up in Santa Cruz, which is a pretty, uh, smoking weed's pretty popular there. And mm -hmm. I was like getting into high school and kind of like just doing what everybody was doing, you know, like at that age, just, I didn't have my own drum beat, didn't know how to march to it. So I was just following the crowd and, you know, we were like trying out smoking weed for the first time, thought it was cool. I think it was 420 and I, uh, I'd smoked a couple of times before, but never gotten high, I guess. And then all of a sudden built this huge bong and got properly high. Yeah. And I was, 14 years old, but also like a very young 14 year old, just like very innocent, you know, had no, um, definitely had no, uh, context around like set setting integration, <laughs> any of these types of things and, uh, and no real support, right? Like I was around a bunch of other 14 year olds and like, it felt like my real, it was like, a um, I don't know, it was a dimension shifting, like ego death experience where like reality just like shifted and cannabis yeah, yeah yeah like a ton of it yeah and um and i was super freaked out but didn't really know what to say i was with all my friends and i was kind of oh like my God, i'm same. tripping and uh and i felt like i felt pretty shook like for weeks after because it, it just opened up new perspectives of reality for me that i just wasn't ready to contemplate mm -hmm. and um and then it's like, I didn't want to tell my parents about it. Mm -hmm. My friends were 14. Like, what were they going to do? Yeah. So I felt super alone. And, and so I felt very disassociated from reality. I felt disassociated from my family, from my friends, and just felt, I felt really depressed and I felt scared. And, you know, so my first psychedelic experience, I think, brought a lot of reverence to psychedelics. And when I look back on it now, it was kind of just like, oh, that was like a full, that was like a journey that you know, I didn't have the right set and setting and I didn't know how to integrate. And it took me like, like a year probably to like integrate that to where I started to like feel normal again. 
And when I, um, to feel normal, I really just try to like fit in with the crowd again, like just doing the thing. But maybe six years later, I was in college and um, I had a roommate who took his life. And mm -hmm. it was a very, uh, it kind of brought back a lot of those thoughts and those feelings about about life, like what it's all about. Why do some people suffer? Why, you know, like these existential sort of unanswerable questions. And um, to be honest, in some ways, I felt like if I didn't, you know, face those things, if I didn't like take time to like stop just following the crowd and trying to feel good, like quote unquote, feel and look good all the time, mm -hmm. um, I could end up in a similar spot. And so it was kind of the beginning of a, I, I think it's probably going to be a lifelong journey of just like curiosity and, and introspection and, mm -hmm. and uh, letting myself ask questions, you know, in that way. Yes. And a couple years later, I was doing my first ayahuasca journey. Um, I'd done a couple, you know, I had like a psilocybin experience with MDMA that was like really, really special. And then I did my first ayahuasca journey after that. And that was just like, it was a three day retreat. Um, day two was kind of the bigger night where you're, you know, you're, you're there, you're feeling comfortable and you take a, a larger um, amount. And it was the most intense and beautiful night of my entire life. And just like really um, like built a relationship with myself, like self, self, like the deeper self that's, as deep as it goes and mm -hmm. that I could ever imagine. And, um, it just gave me, a, yeah, it gave me like a feeling that, it, I mean, it was so much like it, we could have mm -hmm. multiple episodes on it, but it just I gave know. me a, it gave me this like feeling that like, you're, you're okay. Like yeah. you, you don't have to do it. Like you, it's hard to explain, but there's this message that like, you don't have to do anything. And it's not that like, yeah, just go sit on a couch and like, don't do anything. It's more like when you're aligned with that feeling, like this feeling that you're feeling, mm -hmm. it's like, you're still going to be in motion, but it's mm -hmm. like lying on an inner tube and floating down a river. Like, it's kind of like, I got you. Like yes. the universe has me. Yes. And as long as I'm aligned with that energy, yes. it's going to feel easeful. Yes. And, um, and it's not going to feel like doing, it's not going to yes. like, you're going to, you could work all day long, but it's going to feel like swimming downstream. You know what I mean? Right. And so it was like this huge feeling of relief because I'm just such like a doing person. And yeah. I was like, just seeing myself just constantly trying, trying, going, yeah, going, same. going, going. And I wouldn't say it's like, it's not like that's shifted. And there it's after the experience, it's like, that's when the work begins. And that's when the gifts really Yes. After a psychedelic experience, that's yes. when like the gifts really start to be delivered to you and Absolutely. you kind of have to accept them and you have to, uh, to act on them. Yes. And so it's an ongoing relationship. It's an ongoing commitment to, uh, you know, making sure that that connection is clear and making sure that I am em embodying that. And I'm very active still, you know, from the outside looking in, I do a lot, especially when I started this company, I was like, it was like, I was working, like, if you looked at what I was doing, like I was working so, so, so hard. Mm -hmm. Um, but from the inside out, it felt like flow. Like it felt yes. like I was being carried along yes. and it was, it was the, yeah, it was just kind of like proving what I felt, um, in that spiritual dimension in yes. this dimension. And it was yes. a really beautiful thing. And so, yeah, I mean, that for me was, uh, was a huge moment. And when I started this company, I felt like I, I felt like a business could change the world in bigger ways than just its products can just by mm -hmm. what it believes and what it stands for. Mm -hmm. And so from day one, I started donating to MAPS, which is the multidisciplinary association for psychedelic uh, research, mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, psychedelic studies. And, um, and started to put that in our content, like proud, right. loud, yes. loudly and proudly. Yes. I and, love uh, and yeah, I, I think that there's a lot of people suffering out there. There's a lot of people that probably felt like I have felt um, where they felt lost. They felt disconnected. They felt disassociated. They felt like they didn't know who to talk to, how to talk about it. And I think just like de-stigmatizing that, letting people know that they're not alone, letting people know that it's that's normal. And then also yes. putting resources behind people 
behind studies or institutions or places that are um, bringing about solutions. Yes. And for me, the mental health epidemic is the cornerstone to all the problems in the world. It's kind of the seed, it's the root cause. When our center for thoughts and feelings and emotions in a, is in a state of disorder, it's like a cascade of negative outcomes follows from how Absolutely. we treat ourselves, how we treat others, how we treat the planet to um, the things we're spending our time on. It's all influenced by the state of our inner world. And so I think that um, I find a little bit of relief knowing that I think or believing that if we solve that inner state, you know, a positive cascade will follow. Of course. Of and, course. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, putting a lot of energy on, you know, solving things from the root, from the seed, and that hoping that the the fruits that grow from it are are quite different in the future. Yes, that's so beautiful. And you're absolutely right. It's an inner game. I think that is the biggest re revelation I got from my psychedelic experiences. It all comes from within and it all comes through how we're working with our thoughts and emotions and the way that you were describing that feeling of motion and flow it's a balance that's what mm. i experienced too it's always a balance and then you get into the flow you realize these things through these experiences but then it's up to you to take action and that's why i i also i see it as a yeah. tool in our lives and you also use these tools with balance and moderation and it's about you going out into the world and actualizing these things yourself so when i yeah. first got your starter kit and i saw that you guys supported and you guys talked openly about it i was so excited because that's that's how i see these things too but uh just a caveat, Mudwater doesn't sell psychedelic products. We do you guys not. Are, yeah. <laughs> Some people ask me when I when I started to talk about um, Mudwater, but the mushroom adaptogens, though, interesting enough, uh, I'm always going to be a supporter of psychedelics. It's such a tool in my toolkit. I use it very similarly as you. It's just something that helps me stay on track in life, helps me get my blueprint, and then I go out and do things in life for myself. But again, the more I reduce all these stimulants and these attachments to even things like supplements. So the more natural I can be and use natural sources like mushrooms, the more I feel like even mushroom adaptogens, that's why I'm very, very curious about the strains. If you use it properly intentionally and you understand a different dosage, how it affects your body, it can kind of give you a similar effect. And if you pair it with breath work and meditation as what you experience on psychedelics too. Yeah, I mean, I haven't felt like a psychedelic experience with functional mushrooms too much, mm. but, um, and I also have been taking functional mushrooms like every day for the last six years, Yeah, but they, I, I found that they do pair very well with microdosing, yeah. like our, our product, especially. And right. So I definitely do that. Um, and I've, I've heard similar things from others and I know that there's companies right now, there's a company called Brez that is starting a, uh, it's kind of like an alcohol alternative and it's using this like super high dosed micronized lion's mane to induce more of like this like flow consciousness right. shifting state right. for sure. Yeah. So I think it's definitely possible. Yeah. I think for me it's less about because, yeah, I mean, I don't know the science behind the psychedelic effects, but for me, when I talk about how psychedelics support me to get into this meditative connected state where just like you were saying, going to the roots, it's almost this feeling of I'm fully in the roots of myself and whatever right. I'm thinking about. At the same time, I'm connected to yeah. this higher consciousness. It's the same thing, or it's like both at the same time. So yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So if that is the point, if that is my goal of where I'm getting when I use psychedelics, then I kind of see it more as my body the more I work on myself, the more I do breath work, the more I explore things like adaptogens, natural sources, what can I do to get myself to that state naturally? Mm -hmm. Not that I will always have psychedelics there, but I think my ultimate goal is I don't need anything, maybe just some natural things, yeah. and then I can get back to that state. So that's what I'm kind of talking about. Sometimes when I take a break, sometimes I'll take a break even from adaptogens, because right now I'm trying to feel what it actually does to my body every day. So I have days where I just take some adaptogens. And when I meditate, I'm not in a psychoactive state, but it's almost 
I get to the same connected states where I can get into that flow state and it almost feels psychedelic, but it's mm-hmm. not psychoactive. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, psychedelic, the word has been sort of co-opted to mean like you're hallucinating or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. But I think like the real underlying definition is, is like mind manifesting. Yeah. Um, like for me, there's so many things that can be that, like travel can be that. <laughs> exactly. Um, a really hard workout could be that. Yeah. But yeah, I think meditation can be that. And I think whenever you're bringing pretty much anything that does uh, play with or alter your your biology or psychology, which, you know, caffeine does, cacao does, turmeric does, <laughs> all these ingredients do. Um, definitely all these mushrooms do, uh, and you're doing that intentionally, it could, you can definitely go a long ways if you let yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I almost see it as, um, removing all the layers. It's just us going back to our true base source Mm -hmm. where there's nothing else involved. That's what psychedelics really do for me to get back to this source where there's no anxiety, nothing. I'm just in this balanced homostasis place and I can just see everything very clearly and I can see the interconnectedness between everything. And that's when the feelings of it's all okay. And at the same time, I'm always going to be acting, but I'm also always going to be relaxing. And it's about finding mm-hmm. that balance. That's yeah. the state I come back to. So yeah, I love that your products help me with that. And I love that you guys are in support of psychedelic research too. There are so many other things that we can talk about for this, but I think we can talk a little bit more about these things on the live stream. We should get there soon. But I do want to just share one more thing because I got this from you guys. I know you have the special edition. Yeah. I got this Have you tried it yet? I haven't tried it yet. I will try Uh, it. You're going to love it. Maybe for the live stream. Oh yeah, should I make it? We don't, I don't have yeah. time to make it right now, but this is the hot co- cacao, right? Yeah. So you guys didn't have this product before until now? Yeah, we just launched it, I th- think, two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, Three weeks ago. And it's a, uh, yeah, it's basically like a healthy, functional hot chocolate. Love so it, it has 18, 1,800 milligrams of lion's mane in it, has ashwagandha, has maca in it. It tastes like it tastes amazing. It's got some coconut sugar, cacao. So it tastes yeah. like a hot chocolate. It tastes like a really right. good, like perfectly sweetened hot chocolate. It's not too sweet and it's not, yeah. um, it doesn't have that, I don't know, Nesquik, Nesquik chocolate, yeah. like fake, fake chocolate, chocolate flavor. Taste. It, it tastes yeah. like, it tastes alive. Um, okay. And yeah, you add it to like some hot milk and it's, it's incredible. But it's yeah. also also super functional. And so, yeah, it's our first stab at like what we call a limited edition product, a limited time drop. Right. And um, to kind of make it special, I ended up painting these three large canvases. Yeah. And each canvas kind of has a different uh, different meaning. Like one of them's painting kind of my, it's more devoted to my my wife. One of them's more around like our whole family. And one of them's more around my son, mm-hmm. who's two and a half and um and yeah so each painting is on a limited time tin and you can go on and like pick your tin when you order the product and yeah i think we'll make the product a a regular thing we've gotten like incredible incredible feedback on it yeah um but yeah super fun yeah and i love how you are showing more of your artwork and your products too because i've taken a look at some of them and they're beautiful is this one the one inspired by your wife yeah yeah, I chose it because I think it was called Mirrors. Yeah. And everything in life is a mirror, so I love it. Yeah, especially uh, especially your relationships. <laughs> yeah, all relationships. Relationship yeah. with myself, relationship with other people. You're a mirror to me right now, too. I'm going to meditate on this after. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, this one has ashwagandha and maca, which the other blends don't have, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so ashwagandha is in our – we have that in our nighttime blend. Oh, I Definitely haven't tried that yet. Yeah, it's it's more of like for mood support, um, helps you. It's not going to like put you to sleep or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but it, it helps you kind of find calm, find balance. Right. And uh, de-stress. And then maca is, um, you know, I think people use it for a variety of different things, but one is more for uh, 
you know, libido activate activation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it can just bring about like vitality, I guess, if you wanted right. to summarize it as vitality. Right. It's it's not like a caffeine stimulant energy, but um, yeah, it seems it seemed fitting for a nighttime drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try to even mix this with some of the other blends. Sometimes, yeah, so I for want sure. To experiment. Yeah, I love drinking the original. Like my go-to recipe is actually the original blend, and I add a little bit of extra cacao into okay. it, and then some milk and like a drop of honey. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Actually, let's talk about let's share some recipes on the live streams because I make it my own way, but I would love for you to show me a few new ways of blending these things up. Okay. I have already been exploring, experimenting different ways of making mud water, but sometimes my mud water comes out ugly like this. I have the frother, I have the blend, but and yeah. it tastes yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, so none of our products have any sort of fillers or, um, you know, you can add ingredients that can make ingredients suspend in water better or dissolve in water better, like gums. Yeah. And yeah, all of our products are 100% just natural. Um, yeah. And ingredients like cinnamon, ingredients like cacao, you know, they're they're almost similar to like wood. Like they don't they don't really dissolve into water. And yeah. so you just have to naturally like stir it as you go, um, build that into your ritual. Or I have actually a, a closable tumbler mm -hmm. that I mix it in. And so I just like shake it up throughout the day, yeah. add more hot water to it. Yeah. Um, get a little bonus sip at the end. Yeah, someone wrote, thanks for not using gums, yeah. It's made to be functional, but it's also made to pers to be personalized. So yeah. when you start to add your favorite milk, if you add, I typically, back to the recipe question, like I typically add a little bit of cacao, like a little bit of extra, just like raw, super high grade cacao, um, a little bit of honey, um, a little bit of cayenne sometimes. And then I, I typically just use like A2 whole milk um, I also use some Elmhurst pistachio milk. And then we make a coconut milk and MCT oil powdered creamer that's incredible yeah. as well. Um, I so, just wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, Their MCT that, powder is amazing. Yeah, it's really, really good. I'm a bit spoiled because Mudwater, we have a cafe actually that we opened up earlier this year. It's probably like the first coffee-free cafe in LA and it's in the heart of Santa Monica. And it's also where I work. So it's a large building. It's the physical representation of our brand. So there's a cafe where you can come and try the product. There's a large space where you can come and gather. We have, you know, yoga, breath work, um, workshops every single day. And then we also have space for our team to work. So I, I'm literally working here every day too. Um, but I come in and our barista team has put together a menu of like the most incredible, like I, I tried it and I was like, how did you guys make this? Like, this is way better than what I make for myself. Um, they have some pretty cool, they have like a matcha mint that's really good. They have some smoothies that are amazing. Yes. Uh, we have like a pumpkin spice, uh, a pumpkin spice turmeric latte that's really, really good right yeah. now. And um, and yeah, my but my, my go-to is typically little extra cacao sometimes i'll put some almond butter in it okay and um and yeah make it a little spicy with some cayenne it's bomb so thank you guys for tuning into this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know let me know in the comments below what you think if you have any questions for mudwater or shane you can leave it in the comments below too we will address them and if you're also someone who has anxiety and finds it hard to regulate sometimes which we all do and have a love-hate relationship with coffee <laughs> you can try mud water as well i have my promotion below for you save up to 43 percent off so that's it for today thank you guys so much for tuning in whether you're tuning in from my youtube or my podcast make sure you're joining my live streams i go on live a lot of times after my podcast episodes to interact with you guys and to take questions and as I'm bringing on more guests now, you'll have a chance to interact with any guests I bring on live as well. So hope to see you guys there. And don't forget, when you're in doubt, just take a breath and you just got to see things from a new view. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.